yeah, so. All right, so thank you so much for being here. Um, I thought um, I would just kind of operate under the same, um, using a similar format that we've used for the other interviews. And so for students or other faculty who may not know who you are, if you could just um, introduce yourself and then tell us what you teach at SUU. Okay, well, my name is uh, Carlos Bertoglio. I'm from Argentina. Um, I came to SUU in 2016 and I'm an assistant professor of Spanish. Um, so this is my fifth year here and I uh, graduated from the University of Florida with a PhD in Romance Languages and Literatures. Perfect, perfect. And you, um, and you teach uh, primarily Spanish, you said? I teach, okay, I teach, yeah, we teach several things, but I, I mean, I teach Spanish, um, you know, language classes mm -hmm. from basic to intermediate to more, more advanced classes. And then um, I teach literature classes, culture, history, uh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> but, but yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. Um, so I, I, I'll, I'll kind of go back to the teaching thing here in a second, but I did want to just also point out the fact that you are a published poet. You have um, two collections that I'm aware of. If there's, if there's more, <laughs> there, and there might be, but... Um, no, 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 more in the workings, but not, not, not published. Excellent. Just, so, just published, hopefully. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, so maybe uh, you could tell us a little bit about how you got started in 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 poetry. Was that something that that uh, that you've kind of been doing for a while, or or is that kind of a more recent development? And yeah, maybe give us some background on that. Yes. Well, I mean, no, it's not recent at all. I mean, I think written, you know, poetry, or at least thought about poetry you know, or writing poetry since I can remember, you know, I've, like one of my, my first memories is actually, I think it was in kindergarten. I remember I was, it was like kind of this lonely kid who would just go to the side and start like creating uh, songs. And I think, I mean, there was, there was something in there that never stopped. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's something that was always very um, organic uh, in a way. Um, and then, I mean, as I said, I never stopped writing. Uh, I would, uh, but I would write on the side, you know? So I would just be doing something else and I would write. And I, I, I mean, most of my uh, materials from, from my BA, I mean, if you look, we used, in Argentina, we used photocopies. And so you would find the, the copy on one side and on the other side, a poem, a text, some sort of text. So I would, I would do that like, in a, in a very kind of like underground way, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so that's why my, my first, you know, poetry collection is called Subterrañas, which is like underground. Basically those words were, you know, flowing, but they were not part of like the, like the central me, you know, the, the me that was on the surface. Um, and so, I mean, I, I never kind of like thought about it until I, um, thought myself as a, as a poet or as a writer until I coincided with um, many writers in during my PhD in Florida and, and they were the ones who told me look you're a writer <laughs> and I was like you're you sure uh, and they said, yeah, you're a writer I mean, she, you know so they kind of like pushed me to uh, to bring this up you know uh, to, to, the, to the open you know uh, a little bit. And then what, you know, I love about poetry, it's, it's, um, it's how, how, how open it is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and art in general, you know, it's, it's this, this, I, this freedom, you know, this word that's all around. Uh, it's, I think it's one of the experiences that, that gets you closer to this concept of freedom and also the concept of, of magic you know to me it was, it was like the most accessible form of magic that i could find you know the most natural like this idea of like creating something that wasn't there before and it's 
it's still magic to me. Like it's magical, like every single time, every single time. And and then I remember talking about poetry and and like the first time that I remember you know reading poetry. Um, my my um, my aunt, she's a she's a um, a literature teacher and a writer uh, herself, and her library was very important to me. I was, I mean, my family was middle class to low, you know, so we didn't have a library at home. So, but she did, and I remember she would give me, she would like throw me stuff, weird stuff for me to read at that point. I remember reading uh, Fernando Pessoa, you know, the the, the Portuguese writer, uh, and and then finding out that he would write under different names, you know? <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is fabulous. <laughs> you, can, you can just be whoever you want and you can be more than one person. And mm -hmm. so, and I remember, I mean, that, I still remember that, you know, it was one of, my, maybe it was like seven. And, and I thought, well, this is, this is fabulous. I mean, this is, this is, it's, it's like playing, let's play. And so I always try to connect, you know, I never, never lose sight of that, that element, you know, that, that element of play in literature. And I mean, everything what I, that I do and, and when I teach, when I'm teaching literature too, you know, I want students to, to, you know, you know lose that respect, you know, that they have for literature and, and, and mess with it, you know, and play with it, because I think that's some, the core of, of literature, you know, and I think maybe I <laughs> I extended uh, my answer, but I think that's that's how, what connects me to to poetry. Yeah, no, I I, I think that was fabulous because, and I love that you brought up the idea of play um, because that's something that really personally mes meshes with a lot of like how I approach uh, like what I do at the library or teaching or anything else. It's just you know that th those are my biggest memories too is like oh just being a kid and being able to play and and toy around with a little, a little bit yeah um and it's so i i did kind of maybe related a little bit to that idea of play and maybe experiment and stuff um um i've had the chance to to have you over at the library for a couple of readings for your books and so um i i've gotten to um what was fascinating for me in listening to you read uh, poetry, and, and there were guest poets as well, um, is hearing uh, hearing the language, um, and especially as um, as someone who is a like a native English speaker, and I I don't know Spanish terribly well. Um, it, it was a good opportunity to just hear like language itself and just kind of be immersed in that and and it was really fascinating and so i wanted to ask you about your your process as somebody who is in it fluent in at least two languages um how do you how do you approach the idea of language when you're like studying about writing like do you uh like have you ever like written something first in english and then translated it back or what's your typical process there yeah well um to me that's one element, like, I mean, another reason why I love poetry is, is you know, because of this combination of, you know, sound, rhythm, you know, and, and, and so, um, and that's one of the main reasons I, I don't write in English. <laughs> because I, and not, not because I, I don't think English, it, it's a, like, rhythmic <laughs> <laughs> language or it doesn't sound good. It's because I don't feel I have the grasp, you know, of of that of that rhythm, of that flow. I mean, I don't, I don't, cap, I don't, I feel I cannot capture it at, at this point. And I, to me, that's that's essential. I mean, uh, and I'm glad you say that. Even you, even though you didn't speak, you don't speak Spanish, you could, you know, in in a way, enjoy uh, mm -hmm. the readings. Because that's 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 one of my uh, goals, you know. Um, I, I'm very meticulous in the way I I work on on, on a text um, because I I feel that it has to flow and it has to have this this rhythm that that transcends or that works like uh, you know uh, parallel to the um, to the meaning of the poem, you know. 
so that you, you're able to, to appreciate it and, and, and enjoy this poem um, without necessarily, you know, uh, focusing on the message, if there was one, you know, to, to focus on. Um, and so, yeah, I feel, I mean, I work a lot on that. Uh, so uh, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's very important for me to, because I think poetry needs to be read, aloud, needs to be read aloud. And, 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 uh, and so I, uh, I go back multiple times to single poems and until I cannot feel that the poem sounds uh, the way it should. Um, it, it's, it's, it's not over. I mean, and hope maybe that has to do because, I mean, that's connected to the, the um, uh, to my uh, training because I'm sort of a musician too. And so uh, I, I've never been able to, you know, separate the two. I mean, I, I don't think of, of, of poetry as, as, as something that it's like a written text. I mean, it's, it's much more than that. And so I try to bring that into, into my, my, my texts. I mean, I'm, I'm just try, you know, and, and, in in terms of writing in English, I've, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a possibility, but, um, not, not yet, not yet, not yet. I'm actually working now in a translation of a, of, of, of a book that's still not published, but uh, I'm working with uh, Professor Laura Walker. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. And so I, I, I asked her to do that because I needed someone who, was, who could speak both languages, but also was a writer and understood this, a poet, you know, this concept of rhythm and, and flow. And to me, that's, that's very important. If that's not, uh, you know, translated, it's, I think most of it is lost. And it's, it's, a, tough, <laughs> it's a tough job, you know, to translate poetry. Yeah, yeah, and 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 uh, that's a really good point. And, and it, so it sounds like what you're saying is kind of the the music comes first, and then like like the the meaning almost kind of emerges from that. Or, I, I guess not necessarily, not necessarily. But um, even if the meaning comes first, comes first. I mean the uh, the poem is not is not finished if it doesn't sound right. Uh, so. The musicality of it, it's, 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 to me, the most important aspect of, yeah, I would say it's the most important aspect uh, in, in, in my, in my, I mean, in my texts, yeah. Um, that's, that's really excellent. I, for, for students who may watch us later and maybe don't really have, um, like, a, a good foundation in, in, uh, like, uh, non non English poets, right? In in the whole tradition outside of that, like um, uh, like do you do you have recommendations in terms of like who who were like some some poets that that really like influenced you, like mm -hmm. growing up or continue to influence you? Um, okay, yeah, that's a question. That's a tough question. <laughs> it's a tough question because. When you recommend people, you're always leaving like lots of people, you know, out. <laughs> right. out, out. And, um, but I can, I can, yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what I read growing up and what, because that's, that's another thing, you know, people, not everybody, but some people, when they think of poetry, they think of something like inaccessible, you know, something that's very hard to understand stands in there and it's not it doesn't have to be that way it doesn't have to be that way you know um so i remember well growing up as i said Pessoa was was the first you know first poet i remember reading portuguese in translation um and then i remember alfonsina storni alfonsina storni uh, uh who's a poet um, who was born in the 1920s or, or no, a little bit earlier, but she wrote in the, uh, in the 20s. She was uh, like a feminist at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, like her poetry seems, I mean, it's, it's, it's accessible uh, and it's, um, they're like hits, you know. <laughs> some, some poems, there are, there are, you know, uh, 
that everybody knows in Argentina, you know, and so I Then growing up, I, I started reading Alejandra Pizarnik, which is another great poet, but much more like a tormented soul, you know, completely different. I mean, or, or less accessible, but a great poet to read if you're an adolescent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, and then um, from the 90s, there's a poet that's called Fabian Casas, uh, who's very good, very good poet, and also, um, um, you know, a good poet to, to, to read, to then start, you know, getting to know other poets. And like, uh, one of his poems, uh, or some, maybe, I mean, more than one of his poems are kind of like uh, social media hits. You know, that's, that's a great mm -hmm. thing about poetry. Poetry now is being distributed and shared on social media. And so, um, and that's, that's, that's another thing that was great to me about poetry. I remember, um, I mean, people in my family, they have records uh, with, I know, Pablo Neruda's, uh, you know, 20 love poems and a song of despair, you know, and, and people would listen to that and, and, and like almost everybody, you know, at least remembers some lines from their poems. And so um, I, that's, that's how I, I, I always understood poetry, you know, it's something that, that it's, that's, that's for everybody. Then you don't need to be an expert, you know, to enjoy it. So, well, Neruda, of course, uh, 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 Chilean Nicanor Parra, which is kind of like, was the opposite of Neruda. And he said he wrote like anti-poetry, uh, but he uses humor a lot. And I think that's another element that uh, we have to, you know, uh, keep in mind of that, that sometimes people think it's not, doesn't go well with poetry, but um, I don't know. And finally, uh, I don't know, um, Oliverio Girondo, Mario Benedetti, those are like very popular poets, you know, I'm thinking. And then lately, um, there's one poet, there's one poet, um, it's called Silvina Giaganti, uh, um, who also writes a very personal um, kind of poetry uh, where she like, her book is called Tarda in Apagarse. I know it's hard to, uh, if you don't speak Spanish, but, uh, but it's, it's, it's a great book that was published about three years ago, two, three years ago. And, and it's, it's fabulous. And there are like lots of new poem, poets that, 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 that are uh, writing in, in Latin America now. So I would say um, go to blogs, you know, blogs are, are great. Um, great avenues, you know, to, to, to find more about poetry. But I think that I've given you some names. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. Um, and, and I love that you mentioned, like, um, listening to uh, Neruda on, on the, the records and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and like these kind of, this idea of the, the like popular poets, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I, I, it reminded me of um, when I went to, to Ireland, and there's, su there's such a big culture of poetry there and they would uh like after dinner they would ask for a parting piece where somebody recited a line of their their favorite poem and and it just made me realize how um how i i have hadn't exposed myself to as much poetry as as maybe i should have right <laughs> and and like you said earlier it's not it doesn't have to be inaccessible mm -hmm. um, and yeah. i did i did want to ask about because i um, one of the things that I thought was was so cool about having you over at the library to read is that I, I think it's um, it's so important to um, expose yourself to new uh, like languages and, and cultures and, and just new ways of kind of like I guess experiencing art. Um, and so as as a professor who who teaches this for a living and, and is kind of enmeshed in, in the world of languages, I was wondering if you might. Um, just say a little bit about like how like about the importance of that or where you see that as as being kind of essential to a student's education I guess yeah well I mean I think that's that's central to to college education in general I mean if you go through college and your your views have not been challenged 
<laughs> or your horizon has not been expanded, so, well, you've wasted your time and in the US, your money. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, you know, I, I come from a country where uh, I could, you know, study, uh, you know, public education is, is free. So I could, that, that was, that's why I'm here, basically. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to afford it. But um, I think it's, it's crucial, you know, to, 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 to find, um, you know, someone who would shock you <laughs> and, and, and will, will, you know, open doors for you to, to go through. You know, I remember, um, and that's, that's what we try to do in, in our, you know, in our profession, in our department, you know, languages and philosophy, you know, we, we try to bring, you know, different worldviews to students and, um, and, and we, we're not, telling them, okay, this is the truth, because it is, it is not, but it is another way of, of understanding the world. You know, I remember um, when I was a college student in, Ar in Argentina, uh, we would um, have like one Fulbright professor uh, every year from the U.S. And um, I remember at the time, because, well, my first, my B.A. is in um, English as a foreign language, teaching English as a foreign language. Um, so I remember I, I was kind of like an expert, you know, in, in U.S. culture, and, and, and I knew all there was because I would watch TV and I would watch like thousands of movies. Um, but at the same time, I thought uh, I was perfectly normal, you know? Everything was the way I thought it was. I mean, that, I, that there, was, there was a world and, and people who didn't do this were really strange, you know, really weird. And um, I remember, you know, the fact of, that we had this opportunity of, of meeting these professors uh, from, from, you know, the US um, made me realize that I didn't know a thing about what being American was or, or, or anything about this culture. I just, I just knew just the surface. I mean, I, I knew nothing, you know? And, and, and so also, I mean, it taught me a lot about myself and my ways and what I thought it was the right way of doing things, you know? And, um, and to me, that was, that was really eye-opening. I mean, it was, it, was, it, was, it was great for me to, to, to understand I was, I was not so important and I, was, I needed to learn so much more, you know, and, 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 and that I had to explore the world and that by exploring the world, I would explore my world, my own world. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to do in our classes, basically. You know, when you're taking a language class, uh, it's, it's not just about, you're not just learning about, you know, grammar or vocabulary. You're learning about, um, culture, but your own culture and your yourself. And, you know, that's 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 what we um, try to, you know, um, to bring into the classroom, right? Uh, some students, you know, take uh, a language class because it's a requirement, and then and they end, end up staying and taking, you know, more classes because they think, oh, well, I'm learning so much about my own culture, my language. And I mean, I mean, you start, when you, when you learn a language, you're out of your comfort zone immediately. Mm -hmm. And you start, you're forced to look at yourself from different perspectives. And you start understanding, you know, through language, uh, understanding the perspective of other people and how other people, you know, view the world and understand the world. And I think now more than ever, that is, that is crucially important. Uh, and so uh, if you haven't <laughs> thought a language class, do so, please, because it will, it will help you, you know, be a, a, a more a well-rounded person, a, a, I mean, a better person, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a great way of putting it. Um, and, and for students who might watch this later and be interested in taking a class, um, what, what classes are you teaching in the fall? In the fall, I'm teaching um, two Spanish 1010 classes, which is the first level, that first, um, yeah, first level, beginners. And then I'm teaching two um, Spanish 3300 
um, which is uh, intro to Hispanic literature. So, but in, I mean, we have, in the department, we have five uh, Spanish professors. We have um, two French professors, a uh, German professor, a uh, Chinese professor, three philosophy professors. One of them teaches Greek. Uh, so, of course, it's not just about Spanish and then like a multitude of, of, of classes that you can, you can pick from. Uh, so, um, if you take my class, great, but we have, you know, many, many other uh, great professors too. Um, I, I, I did want to ask about, because um, you, you mentioned how, like, uh, taking a language class is how it can kind of expand your horizons and, and make more well-rounded. Do you feel like um, on the other side, teaching it has, has helped you do the same and even like maybe inspired poetry and stuff on, on the creative end? <laughs> um, well, teaching, it's, it's keeps you young, you know, I'm, I'm 55 <laughs> and <laughs> no, I'm not 55, but, but, but teaching is wonderful, you know, because it, uh, it keeps you fresh, uh, mm -hmm. and you keep learning about yourself mm -hmm. and, 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 and you learn from your students every single class i mean it's there's no it even doesn't matter how miserable you feel or how awful <laughs> the class went you're learning mm -hmm. uh so it's it's um oh yeah oh yeah I've, I've i mean i've learned a lot i keep learning a lot about i mean about the culture i live in now about students different um, cultures and what they bring into the classroom. I mean, I think that that's why it's it's very important that uh, you know in this university we we try to keep classes at, you know low numbers because that way um, it's more than I mean it's like oh yeah professors know you well, it's more than a slogan. I mean, it's it's a necessity. I mean, if I don't know if I don't get to know my students, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing my I'm not doing my job and I'm not. I'm not doing it efficiently. So um, I, uh, uh, yes. Uh, and then in terms of poetry and, and it, well, in, in my literature classes, we, I, I do, uh, I don't expose my students to, to my own uh, production. You know, I don't, no, I'm not that kind of, I'm not that kind of professor. No, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't. I don't like doing it, but I do like um, you know trying to inspire that that playfulness in them, you know. And so we we tend to um, do lots of exercises uh, when we when we write and we we play with literature or we try to you know imitate certain styles to understand what they're doing and and so yeah many times I've, I know I play with them, you know, and I write with them and, or something they say, you know, it's like, oh, okay, it could be the start. But it doesn't, I mean, typically when I, um, I very rarely I, I, I just come up like, oh yeah, this idea, I'm gonna write about this. I do sometimes, but in most cases, it's just maybe one word that, starts like calling the others you know? right, right. Or, or a sound I mean it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's hard to explain but it's not um, it's I mean the beginning is not very conscious many times you know it's mm -hmm. like more like I don't know I don't know how to explain it but, but that's that's the way it works but yeah I mean I I've, I'm one person so I cannot uh, you know keep the writer uh, out right. I'm there uh, but I'm not I'm not teaching them my poetry as an example right. of anything. <laughs> yeah, I, and I think I, I think you explained it wonderfully. That that makes so much sense. Um, I here at the end in our in our last couple of minutes, I just wanted to um, ask if you would mind telling us the titles of your books and sure. uh, copies at the library to check out. Uh, I know, but they're also available on Amazon, right? Okay. That's, this is my first book. Uh, it's called um, Subterraneas, see? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can buy this, this is on Amazon. Mm -hmm. uh, on Amazon, on Barnes and Nobles too, 
and maybe some other places. But those two, they have copies of these. Um, and this one, I, I published it here in the, in the US. And this, the second one is called uh, Una Temporada en el Ruido. Uh, and this is published by Caleta Olivia, which is a really up and coming, you know, publishing house that only publishes poetry and like the really, really good poets in Latin America are published here. And then some of the poets that they just <laughs> they just like, uh, but, but 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 no, I mean it's it's really getting a name um, for 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 the the quality of its of its texts, um, and so this one you can uh, I have copies. <laughs> you can come to my office, uh, <laughs> which is um, uh, here in the what's what's this building? Uh, um, the, the general classroom building 411. Yes, I forgot the name. Of the building. Uh, but then you can buy it. Um, it it's it's um, distributed in Argentina, so there are some some um, um, bookstores that would ship it worldwide worldwide. But it's it could be a bit expensive. I mean, it's sure. possible, but uh, I would say if you're interested, just come. Knock my door. I can, sure. <laughs> I can lend you a copy if you want. Or there are copies in the library, so you can yeah. you can discuss them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I really appreciate you taking the time and telling us a little bit about languages and poetry. And yeah. thank you, thank you, thank you. We we should do it more often. <laughs>